I personally think for them to have taken things to the current point, they probably have pretty good evidence. But that's speculation. And until we see that, it's hard to say. Now, let me just say, uh, I think the driver on this from the beginning was, the, was you know, loads of classified information sitting in Mar-a-Lago. People say this was unprecedented. Well, it's also unprecedented for a president to take all this classified information and put him in a country club. Okay, and how, how long is the government going to uh, try to get that back? You know, they jawbone for a year. They were deceived on the voluntary uh, actions taken. Uh, they then went and got a subpoena. They were deceived on that. Uh, they feel, and the record, the facts are starting to show that they were being jerked around. And and so, how long? You know, how long do they wait? <clears throat> I think the the whole idea of a special master is a bit of a red herring. Uh, the only documents that have been taken, it seems to me, that there's a legitimate uh, concern about keeping away from the government and insulating the government from would be documents relating to his private lawyer communications, him as an individual and his outside lawyers. If there's stuff like that, fine, identify it. it there doesn't appear to be much of it. I'm not sure you need a special master to identify it, but what people are missing is that all the other documents taken, even if they claim to be executive privilege, either belong to the government because they're government records, even if they're classified, even if they're uh, subject to executive privilege, they still belong to the government and go to the archives. And any other documents that were seized, like news clippings and other things that were in the boxes containing the classified uh, information, those were seizable under the warrant because they show the conditions under which mm -hmm. the classified information was being held. So I think it's a red herring. Uh, I think it would, you know, at this stage, since they've already gone through the documents, I think it's a waste of time. Now look, two things can be true here. First, I understand that Bill Barr is not the arbiter of all things true and just. This is the guy who lied point blank to the American people about what was in the Mueller report, only to finally allow it to be released days later where it said the exact opposite of what Bill Barr indicated. This is the guy who allowed Trump to weaponize the DOJ. It's the guy who carried water for Trump's stolen election claims, suggesting that mail-in balloting was, quote, very open to fraud and coercion was, quote, reckless and dangerous, and was akin to, quote, playing with fire, only to relent once it became apparent just how illegal Trump's actions were becoming. However, for even that guy, who bent over backwards to coddle Donald Trump throughout his years as attorney general, to come onto Fox News and explain clearly and concisely exactly how Trump broke the law, is pretty damn significant, if not more significant given the ways that he was willing to defer to Donald Trump before. Remember, Trump's quote unquote power is derived from the fact that he's been able to achieve total fealty from the people around him. No one on the right would speak out against him. He was able to operate from a united front, knowing full well that he could commit crimes with impunity or else the people who spoke out against him were willing to risk excommunication. And that worked for an insanely long time. But now, having someone of Bill Barr's stature within Trump's own administration speaking out on national television shatters that air of invincibility. Trump needs fealty to operate in the way that he does, and he's very clearly losing it in real time. And as far as Trump's response is concerned, let's just say he's taking it about as well as you'd imagine. He went on to Truth Social, which is the place where Trump goes now to confess to his various crimes, and he wrote, quote, Former AG Bill Barr was fired long before I left the White House on January 20th. He acted very slowly on the no collusion Mueller report in the FBI, and Justice had the laptop from hell in their possession, which totally exonerated me long before Mueller's decision came out, years later. A waste of time and money. The laptop information should have been released before the rigged election, not after it, for the voters to see. He was petrified of the lunatic Dems and of being impeached. In other words, Bill Barr should have released the Mueller report sooner, even though he wasn't running that investigation, Robert Mueller was a special counsel, and even though Barr lied about what the Mueller report actually said anyway, and then it was all moot because something, 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 Hunter's laptop. Make sense? Didn't think so. But there's more. Bill Barr had no guts and got no glory. He was a weak and pathetic rhino who was so afraid of being impeached that he became a captive to the radical left Democrats. Please, please, please don't impeach me, he supposedly said. Barr never fought the way he should have for election integrity and so much else. He started off okay as AG, but faded fast, didn't have the courage or stamina. People like that will never make America great again. I'm not positive we have a source for the please, please, please don't impeach me line, but you know what? When in doubt, the safe bet is probably just to believe everything that Donald Trump says. That's worked out well before. Just ask Trump's lawyer, Christina Bob, who recently signed a sworn affidavit on Trump's behalf attesting to the Justice Department that all of the classified documents have been returned from Mar-a-Lago. And we all know how that turned out. So yeah, when Trump says something, 
maybe it's best to take a second look. As for what Barr said during the interview, he did quite effectively swat down all of the tenuous talking points being propped up by the right. Like for example, this idea that the Trump team was cooperating with the DOJ, and so the quote unquote raid was completely unnecessary. Only minor issue, they very clearly did not cooperate considering the FBI found over 300 stolen documents at Mar-a-Lago. Just so we're clear, that is not what cooperation looks like. Cooperation would be no documents at Mar-a-Lago and all of the documents returned to the White House. The fact that the FBI agents had to come in and take them after a request and after a subpoena very clearly undermines this idea of cooperation. Also on Trump's request for a special master to review the seized documents, not for nothing, but if you're Donald Trump and you're really concerned about the FBI commingling personal items and stolen classified government items, Maybe don't store your personal items among the stolen classified government items. His passports were even taken because they were stored among classified documents. That's like a bank robber stealing bags of cash from a bank and throwing his own wallet in there too, and then complaining when the cops took the bags and his wallet along with them. Sorry, but you don't get to complain when you decide to mix your own shit with stolen government property. Now let's be clear about why Bill Barr is doing this. Did this abject, shameless partisan suddenly find a conscience and decide to look out for what's best for the country? Maybe, but it's more likely, in my opinion, that Barr is part of the wing of the GOP who recognizes what a toxic liability Trump is and is doing whatever they can to get him out of the way. Remember, the GOP's sole goal is power. There is no governing philosophy. These are people who pretended to be pro-states rights and then turned around and signed onto a Texas lawsuit to nullify the results in four different states. These are people who pretended to be fiscally responsible and then added $7.8 trillion to the debt. Again, no governing philosophy. It is whatever they think might help them assume power at any particular moment in time. And so knowing that their only goal is the consolidation of power, it would make sense that some of them would see Trump, who already lost an election by 7 million votes, and recognize that he is not a boon to them, he's an impediment. Bill Barr is very likely of the camp that knows his party probably isn't going to get far lining up behind a guy whose entire vision for America is relitigating an election from years ago that he lost definitively. And if that means Barr gets some free image rehab on the way, if it means he can parade himself around like some hero of the Constitution, then clearly he won't shy away from that. So again, we can do two things at once here. We can recognize that while Bill Barr isn't some beacon of all that is righteous, he's also telling the truth here, and he's doing it on Fox News to an audience that very likely needs to hear it. So here's to hoping that those people recognize that the rot in the GOP goes much deeper than Trump alone. Before you go, couple things. First, if you want to support my work, the best way is to subscribe to this channel. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. And second, if you want to see and hear more from me, check out my website, BrianTylerCohen.com. That way you can get links to my podcast, merchandise, ways to donate to voting rights organizations, and so much more. The thumbnail is also right here on the screen, so go check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching.